Namaskar learners. I, Harpreet Kaur, welcome you all on behalf of National Institute of Open Schooling, that is NIOS. As you all know that the motive of NIOS is education for all. That's why we keep on bringing for you our audio and video programs. And today, in this video program, we have brought something very important and interesting under the subject chemistry. We are going to talk about coordination compounds. But before we start the topic, let me ask you a question. Learners, do you know we all are chemists? Confused? Let me explain you how. We use chemicals every day and perform chemical reactions without thinking much about them. And it's very important to understand chemistry because chemistry shows the world around us. From cooking to cleaning, from fireworks to medicine, chemistry plays an important role. And those students who want to make their careers in this branch of science, it is very important for them to understand the basic concepts of chemistry. So if you wish to become a doctor or a geologist, a nutritionist, and of course chemist, then you need to study chemistry. And what are we waiting for now? Let's start learning chemistry. Today we have with us Professor Suleip Chandra, who is Associate Professor from Zakir Hussain College, Delhi University. Welcome to the studio, sir. Thank you, madam. And we also have with us Dr. Rajiv Prasad, Academic Officer Chemistry, NIOS. Welcome you, you, sir. Thank you. So, sir, before we take up the topic of coordination compounds, I would like to ask you, what do you mean by complex compounds? Yeah, that's a very important question. Complex compounds, you can easily say that if you take the only complexes, that metal line is surrounded by certain organic moieties. Mm -hmm. That is generally called the ligands. Okay. So such type compounds are known as complexes. But actually, the coordination words come from the bonding. Because there are three types of bonding, that is ionic, covalent and coordinate. Coordinate compounds means that we have coordination bondage exist. We have the compounds having coordinate bond. Such compounds are known as coordination compounds. So let me discuss about this role of the coordination compounds in different, as I, you know very well aware, about the photosynthesis process in plants. Hemoglobin in animals, living beings rather you can say, they play an important role in their livings. If photosynthesis reaction is not there, then they, plants will not be able to prepare their food, that yes. is starch. Similarly, if hemoglobin is not there, then it is difficult to survive for the animals or living beings, you can say. Similarly, you will find that in medicines, as Harpy told you people, that chemistry is everywhere. Mm. So in medicines, complex also plays an important role. For example, you can take sodium nitroprusside, which is used to lower the blood pressure during surgery. And similarly, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid, that is called EDTA, is used as an antidote poisoning of mercury and lead. So you will see that the role of the complexes is far. Now, as far as complexes are concerned, all the compounds known so far has been divided into two categories, known as simple salts and second category is addition or molecular compounds. Simple salts means the compounds are obtained by neutralization reactions. For example, you take sodium hydroxide, mm -hmm. react with hydrochloric acid, you will get sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a simple salts. Now addition of molecular compounds are where we combine or we mix two or more simple salts in a definite ratio. Then in any solvent, then solvent is allowed to evaporate. The compounds so obtained are known as addition or molecular compounds. Okay. They are further divided into two categories known as double salts and complexes. Double salts means you will find here, you can easily differentiate with double salt and complexes. Double salts will retain their identity in solid state only. When you dissolve them in any solvent, they dissociate and you can confirm by using qualitative test. For example, you take more salt. You are very, students are very aware about the more salt. That is ferrous ammonium sulfate containing ferrous sulfate, ammonium sulfate. These are the two simple salts plus 6 H2O. When you dissolve this compound in water, 
you will see that you can test for iron radicals, mm -hmm. for sulfate radicals, as well as for ammonium radicals. But if you take FeCN6, 3 minus, if you resolve them into water, you cannot test for iron as well as cyanide separately. It will give you combined test for ferrocyanide radical or ferricyanide radical. Okay. So you can say that double salt means they retain their ionity in solid state only and loses in solution. But complex means that they retain their identity in solid state as well as in solution. Such compounds are known as complexes. Okay. Now you can simply explain the different terms involved in the complexes. The most important part is the coordination number. Actually, in generally books, you will find the number of ligand around the central metal ion. This is not the correct definition. The correct definition is the number of ligand atoms attached with the central metal ion. I will give the example here. You can easily calculate. For example, you take CO and H36, 3 plus ion. Here you can simply say that there are 6 ammonia around the cobalt. So therefore, coordination number will be 6. Similarly, you take another example, COEN3, 3, 3 plus. Here number of the ligands are 3, but coordination number will be 6. Because ethylene diamine, one ethylene diamine molecule attached with the metal ion at two places. So therefore, 2 into 3, coordination number will be 6. Or you can say calcium EDTA complex. EDTA because EDTA attached the six places. So again, there is only one EDTA, okay. but this is going to attach at six places. So coordination number will remain six. six. So you can easily define the coordination number, the number of ligand atoms attached with the central metal ion. Second important thing is, and which is the most important part, that is coordination sphere. You will always use a square bracket. What is the use of this square bracket? Actually, the use of the square bracket is that only which is the species which is present inside this square bracket will be a part of complex. Okay. I have just told you CO and H36, 3 plus. You will find one square bracket. It means this is complex. If you place CO and H36, Cl3 outside this square bracket, mm -hmm. Cl3 is not, is not a part of the complex. Okay. So that's why students should be clear here. Because you student generally asks and say, that suppose we add silver nitrate, mm -hmm. sir, we'll get the precipitate of silver chloride. You'll get. Because chloride is not a part of complex. So okay. students should be clear, only those species which are written inside the square bracket will be a part of complex. That is complex. Either cation is present outside the square bracket or anion. They are there only just to neutralize the charge present on the complex. So we can define the coordination sphere means a space inside the square bracket is known as coordination sphere. Third is the, and which is most important, students should be clear how they will calculate the oxidation number of the central metal ion in a complex. Yeah. Students should be clear about the charges present on the anions or ligands present inside the coordination sphere. For example, I have just told you CO NS363 plus. A student can easily say that cobalt is X, ammonia is neutral, mm. so X plus 0 is equal to 3. So X will be 3. So therefore, the oxidation state or the number of cobalt is 3. Similarly, you can say, for example, that FeCN6, 3 minus. Here, iron, you put X because cyanide ion has one negative charge. Mm. So this becomes minus 6. X minus 6 will be equal to minus 3 because minus 3 charge is put on the complex. Okay. So you can say then x will be minus 3 plus 6 that is again x will be 3. So you can easily calculate the oxidation number of the complex in the central metal and the complexes as the simple salts. For example, you take KMnO4, potassium is plus 1, you put x for a manganese. So plus 1 plus x plus minus 8 because oxygen is having two negative charge. So you can easily find out the manganese, the oxygen number of manganese will be plus 7. Now next step is, that is the most important, the ligands. H, I have told you the formation of coordinate bound. So generally we define the ligands, that the ligands should have lone pair of electrons. These lone pair of electrons donated by the ligands to the central metal ion. 
the bond which is formed in the center metal line at the ligand is known as coordinate bond so therefore i have told you coordinate compound means they have coordinate bond now you can simply define the ligands means i just told you lewis base lewis base means so metal ion is a lewis mm -hmm. acid and ligand is a lewis base lewis base can easily donate the lone pair of electron to the central metal ion so this is the definitions of the ligands but you should be able to explain the different type of ligands classification based on the different categories for example first class may be based on charges okay i have just told you the charges you students should learn positively how much negative charge there ligand is neutral or ligand is anionic in nature so on the basis of charge we can divide the ligand three categories anionic ligands we have negative charge say cyanide ion sulfate 2 minus 2 minus ion phosphate 3 minus ion acetate minus ion so all these are comes under the category of anionic ligands second category is neutral ligands having no charge like ammonia water ethylene diamine mm -hmm. they don't have charge so these are known as neutral ligand third type category is cationic ligands very few in number that is no plus or c2h5 plus they have positive charge this is the first classification second class will be based on the donor sites you will see here the some ligands donate only one lone pair electrons and attach with the one metal ion simply we can say attachment is one for ammonia attach with the nitrogen only so we say monodentate ligand if the ligand is again attached at two places for example ethylene ethylene diamine ethylene diamine is going to attach with the two nitrogen so that's why we can say ethylene diamine is a bidentate ligand similarly you can give more example oxalate ion carbonate ion that is eight hydroxy conylene mm -hmm. all act as bidentate ligand okay third is tridentate ligand tri tetra penta hexa so on all these ligands combine known as polydentate ligand okay so ligand other than bidentate are also known as polydentate ligand where we can take the example of edta mm -hmm. ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid which has six coordinate sites mm -hmm. or we can take diethylene triamine or triethylene tetraamine mm -hmm. all act as tri tetra dentate ligands mm -hmm. so all these are known as polydentate ligands now another classification is chelate or non chelate this is most important again if a ligand is going to form a jaw that is the ring around the center metal line mm -hmm. these ligands are known as chelatic ligands okay if ligand is bidentate but it is it is not going to form a ring around the center metal line mm -hmm. that will be called as non chelated ligands okay similarly we can classify the ligands on the basis of lone pair of electrons are there or not again we have to divide into three categories the first category is the ligands having only lone pair of electrons for example ammonia water all will have only lone pair of electrons second category is the ligands having lone pair of electrons with vacant pi orbitals okay these ligands are known as carbonyl carbon oxide or arsine or phosphine okay and third category is as I just, this is the contradictory statement again i have just told the ligand means they have so have a tendency to donate the lone pair of electrons but the third category ligands they don't have any lone pair of electrons but they act as a ligands okay they have vacant pi orbitals those vacant pi orbitals overlap with the metal orbital to form pi bonds such type of compounds generally known as organo metallic compounds organo metallic compound means they should have metal carbon bonds so this is about the ligands so professor you have thoroughly explained so far about coordination compounds complex compounds and of course the ligands now dr rajiv my question to you is how coordination compound is different from an ionic or a covalent compound okay. so you have got the basic concepts about the complexes which type of bonding it has yes so now take the example of nacl sodium chloride the best example you can understand when this compound is dissolved in water you will get sodium ion plus chloride ion very simple thing okay when we take another example of a complex suppose we take the example of k3 fe cn6 This is the complex of iron, mm -hmm. potassium hexacyanoferrite. When you dissolve this complex in water, as the 
general observation we should get the ions of iron we should get the ions of cyanide ion and we should also get the potassium ion mm -hmm. all three types of elements are present there okay. but when we dissolve this complex we get only the ions potassium ion we never get that any test uh, or any confirmatory test that shows the presence of cyanide ion okay. or fe3 plus ion so this is the basic differences that in case of ionic compounds we get all the ions we can say the cations and anions present in the ionic compound but in the complexes those elements or the entities present outside the coordination sphere mm -hmm. that is ionized in the water okay. and all the parts which is present inside the coordination sphere that is a uh, big bracket these entities are not ionized that is the basic difference between the ionic and the complex compound so far we have understood a lot about coordination compounds but as a learner we must have some basic idea about mm -hmm. the basic concepts that we use in coordination compounds so dr rajiv i would like to start with you mm -hmm. sir has already explained about the ligands mm -hmm. would you like to add on something mm -hmm. yeah so sir has explained you about the ligands the centrometal ions mm -hmm. coordination number and oxidation states okay so these four concepts are most important to understand the basics of coordination compounds okay for example uh, we we'll start from the ligands if we understand about the ligand their nature mm -hmm. their types of bond coordinate bond basically formed by the ligands okay we can easily understand the coordination number which is related with the coordinate bond formed by the ligands okay so sir explain you that uh, there are three types of ligands the anionic cationic and neutral ligands yes. so these ions basically the coordination ligands decides whether the complex will be ionic cationic or uh, neutral ligands okay. and the most important part uh, about the ligands that what are the number of coordinate bond formed by the ligand with the central metal ion okay that decide the coordination number okay and next the important thing we should understand that uh, what is the central metal ion mm -hmm. basically we confused suppose the example we have given potassium k3 coordination sphere sign then fe cn6 mm -hmm. here is two metals are present basically the potassium and the iron so what the metal which is present inside the coordination sphere each central metal ion and those present outside the coordination sphere they are not the central metal and the outside coordination sphere elements that the potassium they are ionizes but the inside metal that is the iron metal present in the coordination sphere do not ionizes okay and how to determine the coordination number that is the most important part so whenever a complex is given you have to consider only the entities the cations or cations uh, central metal given in the bracket we don't have to look outside the coordination sphere for example in the complex co ns3 whole 6 cl2 this is the basic examples one complex we know that the ammonia is monodentate ligand so total six coordinate bond will be formed with the cobalt hence the coordination number will be 6 okay and cl2 is another entity which has importance in the calculation of oxidation number of central metal ion okay so these are the basic concept we must have to understand better about the coordination compounds professor my next question is for you what is the coordination number of central metal ion this i have just told you the coordination number means the number of ligand atoms attached with the central metal ion for example i have just told you that if you take fecn6 3 minus so there no doubt there are six cyanide ion around the central metal ion So you can say coordination number is six, but certain ligands have more than one coordination sites. For example, you can take CO EN three three plus. Here ligand are three, but coordination number will be six. Okay. Because one ligand will attach with the metal ion two places. So since there are three ligands, three ligands will attach six places. Similarly, you can take EDTA. It is going to attach with the metal ion at six places. So that's why we can say. that also the only ligand that is calcium edta mm -hmm. but coordination number will be remain remain 6 okay mm. so 
So that you students should be clear, not the number of ligands. Students should know that how many places a ligand going to attract with the central metal ion. Mm -hmm. Now two more categories I have, I have to discuss again types of ligands. One more cat one category is which is used in nomenclature as well as isomerage. Okay. That is called MB dentate ligands. MB dentate means suppose you take cyanide. Cyanide has two corner sides. It mm -hmm. can attach with the carbon as well as through nitrogen, but it will always attach with one either carbon or through nitrogen. nitrogen. You are very well aware. Cyanide or isocyanide, either CN or NC. Mm -hmm. Similarly, thiocyanate, SCN. Mm -hmm. It can coordinate with sulfur as well as nitrogen, mm -hmm. but it always attaches the one site only, either through sulfur or through nitrogen. Yeah. Okay. Such type of ligands are known as MB dentate ligands. Mm -hmm. One more category is they are flexi dentate mm -hmm. ligands. I have just given you an example of EDTA, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. We will see that ethylene diamine generally have six coordinate sites. But sometimes, if you want to prepare the complex of platinum 2 or palladium 2 with mm -hmm. this same ligand, you will find that it shows only 4 attached with metal ion at 4 places. So sometimes it has act as hexadentate, mm -hmm. sometimes it has act as tetradentate depending mm -hmm. upon the nature of metal ion. Mm -hmm. Such ligands are known as MB dentate ligand. One more example, I will give you sulphate. Sulphate you can see, sulphate acts as monodentate as well as bidentate. Sometimes mm -hmm. it acts as bidentate. Right. So this is also known as MB dentate mm -hmm. ligand. Now I have to move mainly you'll be surprised to note that from where complex come. Mm -hmm. That complex, first complex, you will be surprised to note that that was synthesized by a color maker of Berlin, not by a chemist. Actually, incidentally, he was preparing washing soda. Okay. He has taken some animal waste in an iron container. Mm -hmm. And he boiled them in the presence of sodium carbonate. Okay. He was surprised to see that he got intense blue color because he was not a chemist. Okay. So therefore, he could not explain why this blue color has been developed. Okay. After that, Tejard was the another chemist who has started to prepare the complexes mm -hmm. of ammonia. He has treated cobalt chloride with ammonia. Mm -hmm. And there is no doubt he has synthesized COCl3 6NS3, okay. COCl3 5NS3. COCl3 4NS3, COCl3 3NS3. Okay. But Treasured could not explain that how many ammonia or how many chlorides are present inside the square bracket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Means Condition. what should be the formula of the complex? Mm -hmm. He could not explain. Okay. He had just uh, given the empirical formula. The empirical formula of this compound is COCl3 6NS3, mm -hmm. COCl3 5NS3, or COCl3 4NS3, so on. Then in 1892, Werner has given his own theory and on the basis of Werner's theory, Werner was first chemist who has successfully explained the formula as well as the structure of the complexes. Therefore, he got Nobel Prize in 1913 and that's why he is known as father of coordination chemistry. Learners, I hope you have understood this chapter of coordination compounds. It is very interesting and very important from your examination point of view. Are you jotting down the important points? I'm sure you are. If you have any queries, you can always email us. With our best wishes and be a successful self-learner. Apart from these video programs, you can also listen to our audio programs, which we call live and interactive personal contact programs. Yes, they are live. You can listen to them through our web radio known as Mukt Vidyavani, and they are very much interactive because we want your participation in those programs. You can always call us in the middle of our audio programs. You can speak to our experts. You can raise your questions. And then, of course, you will get your answers. So we wish you all the luck once again. And with this, it's a wrap. I have Preet Kaur take leave of you from the studio of NIOS. And I thank both my experts, Professor Sulek Chandra thank you. and thank Dr. Rajiv Prasad you. for you. their valuable contribution and time. Good luck. Goodbye.
घर बैठे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश लेने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीयकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुँच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन हिंदुस्तान के हर कोने में नौजवानों के पास प्रतिभा है उन्हें अवसर चाहिए एन आई ओ रहा है युवाओं को अवसर आगे बढ़ने का एन आई से पढ़ने वाले इन युवाओं ने किया है संस्थान को गौरवान्वित दिव्यांगों ने बन के दिखाया है सबल और आत्मनिर्भर एन के साथ आप भी जुड़िए एन के संग